Hi, everybody. My name is Jen with Jen Vasquez Photography. I help the adventurous, fun, and playful party bride capture the life of their wedding while they celebrate the wedding of their life. And today, I'm really excited. We have a guest that is not your typical weddings um, for at this point, but um, I'm hoping to go ahead and bring it to everyone out there. And if nothing else, even if it's not something you'd be interested in for your wedding, let's get educated today. So this is Beck, and I'm really excited to um, have her with us. And she is the, um, are you the owner? One of the co-owners. Of okay, Irene. I wasn't quite sure how that works, so I want to make sure I'm proper about all of that. Anyway, um, her team helps curate guided cannabis experiences at weddings and private events, so not just for weddings. And um, if cannabis is a part of your daily life, we don't feel you should be denied to have some on your big day. So come play with Ivory Weddings and events so you can be Ivory every after. So I'm really, really excited to get educated. I have um, a lot of brides and grooms that um, partake during the getting ready phase. Um, and so this is kind of interesting to bring that sort of way of life to your actual wedding. So I have like a billion and one questions for you. <laughs> and forgive me if I ask something that might be offensive. I, I just am truly trying to get ed get educated and really get my brides and grooms educated out there. Wonderful. Are you ready? Heck yeah. <laughs> Here we go. So how long have you been in business and how did you come upon the idea for this business? Because it's it's unique for sure. Yep. Um, so the business started back in 2014, right after recreational sales went live in the state of Colorado. And I happened to own a traditional wedding flower business at the time and service Breckenridge and a lot of those big fancy ski resorts. And also I worked at a dispensary in ironically the highest town in America. Um, and so it was the by, highest by altitude and by everything else. Uh, even their zip code was 8420, so it was oh. pretty good. <laughs> so um, I also had the highest floral shop in the United States. And so I decided that one day I had extra flowers and my own cannabis plant out of my garden. And I decided to create the first bouquet with bud and was just blown away. And because of my knowledge of working at the dispensary, I was able to wrap my head around legal compliance Make That's sure a that big knew, one, yes. Yep, that I know exactly how to be able to present this as a tangible potential product for clients to have and enjoy on their big day. And so I created bud-filled bouquets and buttoneers for the fellas. Bud so, <laughs> and from there, um, you know, folks knew that I was cannabis friendly, but not all venues were open-minded about cannabis on their property even, just to simply walk down the aisle, not even consume it. So at that point, I started having to realize which venues I could even refer my potential clients to. So then it started building out this network of open-minded and like-minded professional vendors and venues. And then I heard a horror story of a photographer that walked in on a groom and the groomsman smoking a joint before the ceremony. He was coming to tell them that, you know, get ready, we're about get to go start this thing. And saw them smoking a joint, but he felt so uncomfortable that he left. And it was a $4,000 non-refundable contract clients got none of their first look photos they didn't get any of their prep photos they didn't get anything because this guy just simply walked out and literally deleted the sd card because he was so offended and so upset that he was exposed to cannabis so oh, from really? there because of being a professional in the industry i was like oh i know photographers i know venues i know caterers i know all these people and i know how to plan a wedding i might as well start planning weddings and so then we were like, well, it's nice to have the cannabis and the bouquets and just to have easy access, but what if we want to guide and educate people just like you do in a bud tending position at a dispensary, but not only tell them what to enjoy, show them how to enjoy it, coach them through that, talk to them about their fears, their questions, everything. And we decided to do mobile cannabis bar services, just like mobile bartending. Yeah. And we saw that there was a need for that level of education for folks and compliance, but making people feel comfortable and giving them the confidence that they could safely consume and they're in a safe setting 
with professionals who know how to help them if they have an adverse reaction. And just That's one of my questions. <laughs> yeah, and coaching them through baby steps, you know. And so, um, but even like having people just being able to see it for the first time up close or smelling it for the uptime. Like we have yes. so many people coming in since all of our locations that we do business in, ironically, are destination wedding locations. We have folks coming in from all of these prohibition states that are not yet friendly to cannabis. And with that in mind, some of these folks. I've never seen it more than just on a corner from a bag from a random stranger they're trying to get away from. Which like, is not, and, and, and which is not, can, can sometimes not be safe, so. Exactly, exactly. So it's a completely different experience. I mean, we blow people's minds whether they consume or not. Um, it's just beautiful to be able to have an approachable setting that's not like a dispensary where it's a high pressure sales situation. Yes. Where they're afraid of asking the wrong question. You know, we're like, there's no dumb question here come on over. Let's just talk about it. Smell it. Look at it. Talk, like, ask me anything. And if we don't have an answer. Also, basically. Absolutely. So, and we, I mean, at one wedding alone, we had 16 first time consumers. with us, And most of those folks were over the age of 55. So that was a huge win. Now our oldest first time consumer, she was 94. It was awesome. She tried to vaporize her with us. We had another gal who was 92 for her first time. She tried a beverage. It's just, and then we get, get the older folks on topicals all the time and just yes. even having a topical on the bar and say, oh yeah, you have neck pain, knee pain, oh, you're wearing heels? Yeah, girlfriend, rub this on, you're gonna feel a lot better. And even that amount of hands-on education training, how much topical do I put on? All of that, it makes such a difference. We've even converted doctors and lawyers' minds. And now they're going back and spreading the knowledge and the wealth, and well, just the knowledge base with all of their patients and all of their clients. I mean, it's huge because we make it a safe setting, we make it comfortable, but we educate it, elevate it, and break the stigmas. I, I'm, I'm so shocked by your story about that photographer because <laughs> many of my brides and grooms partake uh, before, you know, during the getting ready phase, mm. and everyone's always so apologetic, and I'm like, you, this is your wedding. Like you, this is your wedding, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's legal. So there's, you know, it's, yeah, that's kind of shocking. Okay. Well, I'm cannabis friendly for folks (laughs) who, who need a wedding photographer. I do not make judgments, FYI. Um, So how many weddings do you serve approximately each year? So Denver is our OG branch. Um, They started the longest time ago and um, everybody else kind of came on board last year. So our numbers in our other regions are starting to catch up with Denver. Sure. Denver, we had 85 events last year that were (sighs) weddings and product launches. And events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parties, you name it. So that's just our one branch. So we can't wait for our other branches to get up to that same caliber. And yes. then we're also going to be continuing to launch new regions as we move forward. So we've, well, we even have goals for Irie International. It's game on. Yes. yes. So what, let's just go over it right now. What areas do you serve so that um, people, this is going to be on YouTube and also on my podcast. So people will listen from all over the world. What yes. areas do you serve right now? Currently, we have the Denver area as well as the Aspen High Country Colorado, Rocky region. We also have Northern California, Southern California, soon to be Central California, along with Seattle. And we we'll, cannot wait to tap into Vancouver. That is on the reach. Uh, but we also have services available in Boston as well at this time. But coming soon in the next several months will be Michigan. And shortly thereafter will be Chicago. And I'm assuming because you have a business that you're following all of the legal laws and what have you so that when, when somebody wants to bring cannabis to their wedding, they know that all of the legal situations have been covered and taken care of. Exactly. So what we do is we consult with lawyers in each of those different locales to make sure that we're on the same page with everything that we need to know and our clients need to know. Okay. And honestly, if our lies are, if the laws do not align with our business model, we won't, won't even start. That area. No, yeah. because like there are several states that are currently recreational, but they don't have recreational sales. So our business model has to be in a location with recreational sales yes. in order for it to stay 100% compliant 
but also the state also has to have gifting allowed as part of their laws and regulations where one adult may gift cannabis to another adult within a specific amount size and with no fiduciary financial exchange. Oh, so, oh, so you like, you've got the legal part down. So a oh, bride and a groom yes. would not have to worry when they yes. hire your company because they mm -hmm. know it's all legit and, and following all the rules, the legal rules that are required. Exactly. It's and one also, less headache for the bride and the groom. <laughs> exactly. And to take it a step farther, we also carry insurance policy for a million dollar coverage per event. So we are always, we are one of the only companies that is out there offering our services that actually has insurance. So, so, they, so, so brides and grooms should be weary of other companies to, to ensure that they have the insurance that covers. Because I have insurance also, like I, you, as a bride and groom, you shouldn't want to work with a vendor that doesn't have insurance. Amen. It's just covering your own back, making sure that, you know, you're in a good position, but also like talk to your other vendors, let them know that there will be cannabis at the event if you haven't already disclosed that to prevent one of these situations from happening again. Yeah. So, We're, you know, gonna, but yeah, I've it's got really important to have those that, conversations. That's, yeah, for sure. Um, what about for folks that haven't partaken or and or are unfamiliar, describe the difference between cannabis and CBD, because I want to make sure that um, that everyone that's watching, if they're not knowledgeable, that we give them some knowledge today. Sure. So it's it all sounds so tricky because there's a lot of big names and whatnot. <laughs> but um, long and short, long and short is cannabis is the plant, and then you have cannabinoids that are found in this plant as well as in other plants in the in nature, but Specifically, the THC molecule is a favorite cannabinoid. CBD is another great favorite cannabinoid. THC affects your brain, psychoactivity gets you alert, euphoric, all of these great sensations. High, if yes, just high. to boil that down. Yep. Yeah, exactly. CBD is more your relaxation, your inflammation relief, your pain relief, your anxiety relief side of things. So one is meant to boost, one is meant to relax, which is why, ironically, THC is a natural antidote to see. To CBD. So if you're having too much THC, have, some, have a pure CBD vape pen or tincture, and you can help to counteract that high almost immediately, naturally. That's great. That's, oh, I've got all the tools, girl. That's I got really you. great. <laughs> um, so tell me um, sort of how CBD or cannabis bars work, just in general. Totally. So Simple, easy steps. It's first, you got to make sure that your venue is open-minded about cannabis consumption. That was one of my questions. We have to make sure that the yep. venue is okay. Yeah. Step one, venue. And, and you're, you're saying to be very open with every single vendor so that yes. before you sign a contract, make sure that each vendor is okay with having Absolutely. that at a wedding. Okay, good. Absolutely, because it say it might be a catering company, but it might be mom and pop, and they might want to send their 13-year-old to go help with catering and be in the kitchen, and then their 13-year-old is now exposed to cannabis. That might not be something that they're interested in. It's not that there's any specific laws about not necessarily having exposure to children, just as we drink in front of children at weddings and events all day long. Yes. It's more of a polite, conservative, respectful thing to let them know, just like inform your guests that you're having cannabis. So, hey, you want to party? You want to have a good time? Maybe leave your kids at home for this wedding, you know, so that you can cut loose in a different way. Or if you're not ready to have that conversation with your young kids, leave them at home. You know, there's different ways to bridge that. But often when minors are present, we even set up the cannabis bar in a totally separate area. That's so it's 21 and up only so that yeah. those minors aren't potentially running by. But some folks want to be loud and proud and yeah. It's in the middle of the reception. So it's it's totally up to the clients, ultimately, where that cannabis bar goes. Um, some venues have different policies if minors are present. But again, all venues also have different policies about how you can consume cannabis. Correct. Some are okay with smoking. Some are good with glass, like a bowl, bong, that type of stuff. Some are okay with vaporizing. Some are good with edibles. Some are good with drinkables. Some are good with concentrates. But some prefer to be smoke free and odor free so there's no open flame consumption sure, sure you know some don't want concentrates just as they might not allow shots from the alcohol bar 
because they don't want those. Yeah, some don't allow hard alcohol. They only allow beer and wine. Beer and wine. That kind exactly. of thing. Exactly. So every venue has a different policy. So it's important, number one, to find out, are they friendly before you sign? Number yeah. two, find out how friendly are they and does that align with how you want to consume on your day? If you're typically smoking joints, you want to be able to smoke joints. You don't want to be limited. And, to and they could say that you can smoke outside, but not inside too. So that's, that's something that could every, be. Yep. Every yeah. venue again has different policies on that. Most venues prefer that any smoking stays outside. Some are open-minded about vaporizing inside or even yeah, concentrates. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but like definitely drinking and edibles, those are always fine inside. That's fine anywhere, but it's like, the smell and the smoke factor is what often puts the cannabis bar in a different location. Sometimes even just simply not to upset grandma, you know, to keep it polite and respectful on that topic because you want to make sure that, you know, or say somebody is in active military and they just simply can't be exposed to it. Thinking about who your guests are and their level of comfort with cannabis Really important as to where you put the cannabis bar as well. So yeah, that was one of my questions later on, but let's go ahead and touch on that now because I think it's important. A big concern that people will have is what will my grandma say or what will my priest say or that kind of thing. So you're okay to have it like in a different room at totally. the venue um, or, and, and a certain time, like maybe we'll, you know, it ends at a certain time or whatever and then then that party starts or that kind of thing. So you're, you're used to those situations because there, there are some grandparents and people uh, that, and parents maybe even, mm -hmm. that will not, not only not support it, but would be sort of offended, right? So, Absolutely. yeah. And we have encountered this before. So what we do is we just set it up in a different location. It's that simple. Um, and if they're really afraid of people being upset or concerned, and we typically go with the smoke-free option so that it's, oh, you know, so they're not less, coming back yeah. in from being outside and everybody catches the big waft, you know, even yeah. if they're not physically smoking next to them. Um, you know, often, like, if you're trying to keep it really discreet, edibles and can of cocktails are incredibly discreet because it's one quick trip over to the bar, you get a beverage that the joke is, I know what your garnish is, I see yes. what bar you went to, you know, but it's... Yeah. Other than that, like it looks just like any other beverage. It is very non-offensive or it's an edible that you just simply consume right there on the spot, walk back over and you're not hanging out. You're not lingering. You're not missing any of the party or the event. Um, sometimes we have to kick out our little bar rats. Oh, I'm during, sure. <laughs> during cake cutting time, during first dances. We're like, yo, you're here for the clients. We all want to see them dance we're going to be here till 9 30. <laughs> like, should you, you know. be, should you be concerned about having like alcohol and the cannabis bar? Like, uh, like it, does that work okay? Or do you prefer to not have one? Like I'm thinking in terms of alcohol, you have like an open bar. Are there open bars for your cannabis bars too? Or, or how does it work? How does that part work? Totally. So it's a great question. Um, because of the way that the laws are written, it's technically an open bar for the cannabis bar because the clients purchase the product and we provide the service. So gotcha. that's so how you're it works. serving, not exactly. selling. Exactly. Like, Got well, it. we can't even, it's silly, but we can't even have a tip jar on our bar because that's considered accepting cash hey. for cannabis. Mm -hmm. So our clients have to leave us with booty either on the front end or on the back end or once service is complete. Yes. But we cannot even have a tip jar because of fun regulations. But it's just like an open alcohol bar. But what we do is when there is alcohol being served, we always go and communicate first with the bartenders, say, hey, we're serving cannabis. If you cut somebody off, let us know. We'll cut them off as well and vice versa. Oh, but also, great. we always recommend to our clients in advance when they're booking us, like, hey, we would suggest skipping out on shots. Like, that's not suggested when you have a cannabis bar. And also, maybe taking the liquor from being like an open bar and conserving it down to like a couple of signature cocktails because you're still getting that, like, alcohol sensation or those couple favorite liquor drinks without having free for all crazy access and maybe once those couple bottles are gone for those couple signature cocktails then it totally just flips to beer and wine for the rest of the night so exactly. it's, there's different ways to mitigate it but like what you also see is the frequent flyers if you will who come to the cannabis bar who have their glass of wine and have their joint typically not their first rodeo they typically understand their tolerance and they also know kind of how to walk that tightrope. Ah, 
Well, I don't know about that. I've seen many drunk guests. <laughs> oh gosh, yes, yes. But if, mean, once you have the opportunity to actually yeah. consume, if you're but a consumer, it's open. oh yeah, right? like because yeah. I can't lie, at weddings without cannabis, I tend to have that extra glass of wine. Of but at a wedding where cannabis is available, People I cut back on my possible. wine take because I'm enjoying my cannabis, and, and you it. see that very often with guests, or if it is their first time consuming cannabis, yes, and they're also drinking. Then we're like, hey, let's baby step this. And then they also know that they're on that tightrope and they're being even more cautious than the person who's the frequent flyer. So, so your servers, bud tenders, correct? Yes. <laughs> your servers um, are also watch out for the, like they don't aren't just serving the cannabis, but they'll know if they see somebody who's really, really drunk, and they come up and they want a lot of cannabis. You you would be figuring those type of things. The bride and groom don't have to worry so much about that aspect, correct? Correct. So just like bartenders, um, many bartenders in, I believe it's a re state required certification in 33 states is an alcohol service training program called TIPS training. And when I was a bartender back in the day, I had TIPS training, it teaches you about ID verification and um, you know preventing overconsumption. What happens when somebody overconsumes? How do you tastefully cut somebody off to avoid the drama? Um, what do you do if you need to call for help? And what we did was we decided to make all of that similar level of training and above for our staff. So our staff goes through a very rigorous training program that is everything that a bartender would have. And then all of the cannabis knowledge on top of that, that a dispensary worker would have. And then knowing also how to safely guide them we joke and call ourselves sherpas to some extent how do we sherpa them through the right experience while also allowing them to be involved in what they're consuming so we ask leading questions to see how they want to feel we ask leading questions to see how they don't want to feel we lead we ask questions to know if they had a bad experience and how can we prevent that exact experience from happening again you know we have a very different conversation than when you go up to an alcohol bar like, hey, ma'am, what would you like to drink? Beer, wine, liquor. What do you want? There's no education unless maybe you're at a winery and they're like, what side of the spectrum would you like? That's the closest to where we are. It's more in that connoisseur talking about that spectrum. and Where do you fit in the spectrum? Or how do you want to feel in the spectrum? And really guiding them towards what's the best for them currently at that time or something that they should consider for later. You know, coaching them through their whole experience so like um cannabis can affect how you how your body feels and it can affect how your head feels so people who maybe who have had a bad experience with being you know too high and they don't they don't like that feeling you could guide them to cbd or some kind of cannabis that is more relaxant or body minded exactly. or is that yep Okay. Yeah, we would start, like, we would talk to them about how they want their head to feel as well and start to see, you know, yeah, is that CBD option more ideal or could they do something else that's like a 50-50 hybrid so they don't feel then too relaxed and feel like they're on the opposite side? Yes, so, okay. You know, but a lot of that too is our team, our booking consultants are coaching up the clients as to what to purchase for their guests. So we're telling them, like, hey, we suggest you shouldn't buy anything over this percentage of potency because you don't want to rip their face off and then you don't want them to be a one hit or quitter and everybody's done. You know, yeah. you want it to be like the, the flight of wine where they get to taste a little bit of this, a little bit of this and the little samplings of things and be able to come back and enjoy things. Or maybe this is better for happy hour or, you know, cocktail hour yeah. in the beginning mm -hmm. yeah. because it's getting you chatty and, you know, like chatty and energized. Then you have the next one that's perfect for your food pairing and it's making your mouth salivate and the oh, food's popping. No idea. And then all of a sudden you throw in another one to get them up dancing again after they just had that full meal. And then you give them something at the end of the night to relax them, to send them on their way home. So I didn't you can even orchestrate any it. idea. You can totally orchestrate an event based on the feelings of the cannabis, but also different people know how they just want to feel. Some people love to feel that more relaxed sensation. Some people like to feel that more energized. Great give them what they're looking for or coach them towards what's best. And how do you handle people who um, are curious and want to try it for the first time? How, what does that process look like? 
Holy, so again, we talked to them about how they want to feel, how they don't want to feel, but then we suggest specific methods. Um, depends if they're open-minded about smoke, then we have these tiny little baby one hitters that has a, literally a 15th of a gram of cannabis in it. And they just take, it's like lighting a little cigarette and they just take the equivalent of a sip of wine or a sip of beer. So it's not like they're taking a bong rip. It's not like they're taking a big hit off of a bowl or anything. It's literally a taster little chill them. So if they're open about smoke, that's that way. They would prefer to a smoke-free option. And we talked to them about a, bit, about a flower vaporizer and have them try a flower vaporizer, coach them through how to use it. Often they enjoy that because they actually get to taste the terpenes and the flavor profile of the cannabis. And they have a different appreciation for it because it's not burnt tasting. And it's oh. not smoke. And it doesn't make them smell bad. So vaporizers are a great intro way in. Um, then we look at all of our edibles that we suggest are all micro servings. So they're five milligrams or less. So, you know, under that circumstance, we can coach them on something that might only have one milligram of THC, but it might have five milligrams of CBD, you know, and coach them on baby steps through those. And we always choose edibles that are dissolvable in your mouth because then it's absorbing sublingually, which means it's going into your body faster but also more comparable to beer or wine. Whereas an edible, for instance, a cookie or a brownie that you chew to swallow, yeah. that yeah. technique takes a longer time to, for your body to digest it before it comes back to your head. So it has a delayed oh. onset and a longer duration, which is not ideal for weddings or events that are shorter time frame. Because they're gonna so dry, dry, right? Exactly. So doing things that are sublingual, that are absorbing into your mouth, are acting just as comparable with that 15 to 30 minute onset window as your glass of wine is. And then that same similar type of taper off feeling as your glass of wine. So we try to make it as comparable as possible, which is why then you go to the beverage side of things. Again, cannabis beverage is essentially affecting your body the same way, same time frame, same duration as a beer or a wine. So it's, we try to make it as comparable to that as possible. But say somebody has a higher tolerance, right? And yeah, five milligrams seems like just a little baby shot to them, if you will. Yeah. Well, just as a bartender, we'll sometimes allow a double. We will occasionally allow that, but we do it in a fun speakeasy style. And so we create a, or the guests come up with a code word and they only give the code word to their frequent flyer, higher tolerance consumers. So if they come up and all of a sudden they're like, oh, who to who? I'm like, oh, hey, you have a higher tolerance, cool, I can adjust your serving size. So the bride and the groom and, and you guys come up with a word that they know for their friends who they often partake with so that they're, I didn't, oh, wow. So it's something, because it's a unique service, not everybody yes. has the same tolerance level, but at the same time, we need to coach people through as if they're first time novice consumers to be safe. So in order and also these folks come back to us all night long just like they go to the alcohol bar so it's not like they're coming to us for a one and done get your head right and never see us again situation yeah. do it in micro servings say that that micro serving that strain isn't feeling the best for them they come back to us they tell us ah eh, that wasn't my favorite i would like to try something that maybe puts me more this way mm -hmm. and then we can shift their high and shift their experience or they're having a poor experience that's when our handy dandy adverse reaction kit comes out that's my one of my questions so what do you do if someone gets even if it's for the first time or whatever and they don't like the feeling at all totally so um first it's just going to depend on how are they how are they feeling because is it a mental emergency because they're uncomfortable with these sensations that are new and frightening yep. Or is it a medical emergency because were they maybe allergic to cannabis and do we trigger an anaphylactic reaction? And they don't even know if they've exactly. had partake before. Oh exactly. gosh, I didn't even so, think of that. Well, and we're dealing with plants and many people are allergic to many types of plants and also many people are allergic to many types of essential oils and cannabis is loaded with chirpings, which is essential oils. Oh. So, yep. So, and even like we learn this even more in detail because my business partner and I, Madeline, ironically, are both allergic to the same terpene. So anytime we encounter a strain of cannabis on our bar that has that terpene, even just from smelling it and packing joints, not smoking, our noses get stuffy. I get bright red on my neck and I get super blotchy. 
Yeah. She gets hives on her hands. And so we're like, wow, if we're this sensitive, which we both are, but still like yeah. the rest of the world the could perfect, be this sensitive. And you're the perfect company to hire for this situation because you know what could go wrong. Exactly. Well, I mean, and it's just interesting because, you know, um, different reasons can cause different adverse reactions. So, but like sometimes, you know, it could be like, it could trigger a hypoglycemic attack if somebody blood sugar goes out of whack from cannabis from trying it for the first time but that could also present like a diabetic situation or all of a sudden they're coughing so much and then they can't get their coughing in control then it turns into a panic attack how do you calm them down so first and foremost is i take it back to our training is our staff knows is it a med a mental emergency or is it a medical emergency like okay. and diving into that first if it's a mental emergency we have a lot of different things in our kit that can help bring you down to a comfortable balance or boost you back up if you need it. It depends on yes. are you feeling too high? Okay, cool. We need to balance you and bring you down and relax you. So we have calming teas. We have CBD vape pen. We have a lavender essential oil, a rescue remedy, peppercorns. These so that things. you, yeah, so that they don't, because because sometimes you feel too, you, people can feel too high and not mm -hmm. like that feeling and yep. that can trigger anxiety or exactly. things like so, that. So, yep. So if they're too high because you yeah. know that they smoked that side of the spectrum, you're like, oh, it's not like you just smoked in your car and you don't know what you smoked. You're you like, oh, know no. what you just I smoked the strawberry cough and I'm feeling too high. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. Let's bring you down. So we have tools to bring you comfortably down. Then we have tools to couch lock, you're lethargic, your legs don't work, you're, you don't know what's going on, you're tingly. Well, we have things to get either sugar back in your blood, protein back in your blood, also emergency, so you're getting some electrolytes, some different things like this help boost and energize you back the other direction. Or there's some things in there that are just simply meant for mental anxiety relief, like Rescue Remedy. It's huge. It's a fantastic homeopathic Thing you can buy at Whole Foods, all, any of these natural stores, and it's little lozenges that you just suck on. And that can help anybody, whether even if they didn't consume, it's a nervous bride, a nervous mother of the bride. She's about to walk down the aisle. I should have that in my kit. Exactly, exactly. What is that so, called again? Rescue Remedy. I'm totally going to pack that. Yep, it's heaven. We love it for any reason, for any, like even we had people who were having adverse reactions to altitude sickness in Colorado. We gave them a rescue remedy and it calmed them down, even though they never touched cannabis. We still were able to help somebody. So then uh, we also like peppercorns, common thing that not many people know about, but black peppercorns, if you are having anxiety, if you smell them for 90 seconds, you will gain relief from simply smelling them. You will, it will notice your anxiety will start to drop. Now, if you take the peppercorns and you suck on them, about three of them for about 60 seconds, your anxiety will drop. If you chew on them, your anxiety will drop in 30 seconds. So three little magical peppercorns, depending on how you do it, you can gain some anxiety relief within 90 seconds at most to start to be able to calm the actual down. Peppercorns. That is insane. Well, and it's all natural, right? It is. <laughs> I mean, Which is why so it's is like- cannabis, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes people, if they're having an adverse reaction to THC, they're really uncomfortable trying CBD, even if they think they trust us. They're like, I don't want something from that plant again, because they're just freaked out. Yeah. So that's why we had to have all these other natural remedies that are familiar, that are comfortable, that they know they can literally buy at the grocery store. Um, we also have Benadryl, because if somebody does start to have an allergic reaction, but say that they've never had an anaphylactic reaction to something else. For sure. Then we can yeah. give them Benadryl and be like, yo, buddy, you're going to feel better soon. I'm sorry. You know, like, but if they've been anaphylactic before, then that's our cue to call 911. Oh, because, of course. You know, especially if their throat is closing, their tongue is swelling or itchy or any of those things. But again, part of our training to recognize when you need help. That is so good. But also, like people, when they know that we have this adverse reaction kit, these first timers, they it makes them much more comfortable, more com comfortable and confident because yes. they're like, oh my God, they got my back. And like, literally we have a sign on every bar that says when imbibing in cannabis and or alcohol, watch mixing your libations. If you feel drowsy or lightheaded, sit down and wave us over. Like, because 
We want them to visually see, hey, we got your back. If you feel, if you feel bad for any reason, we're going to go help you. Because like, ironically, we had a brother and sister who concerned her the first time and they both had identical reactions. And I think it's a genetic situation. For and sure. I didn't learn until after the fact that they were siblings. And I was like, it all makes sense. They smoked the same strain. They both had identical physical reactions. And they both were like, no, that's not for us again. That's not for us. And that's totally fine. And yeah. I explained, but maybe that was that one strain. Because for maybe sure. it was a terpene in that one strain. But they also didn't admit to me when we were talking about their usage that they were totally novice. And when I made the blanket statement, rather than calling them out, you always make a blanket statement. If you are prone to anxiety, avoid this. If you're prone to paranoia, avoid this. If you're afraid of feeling couch lock, avoid this. So we don't say straight up, hey, do you have anxiety and call them out in front of their family no, and no, friends? No, 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 you say all the things. That's not cool. Yes, but yes. as soon as we learn, if they're a first timer and they're truthful with us, like, hey, avoid this. But neither of them told us that they were first time consumers until after the fact, and neither of them admitted any anxiety complications until after the effect. Oh so, but we could have potentially prevented that adverse situation, but we all learned something out of it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. So we've gone through so many of my questions already. This is awesome. Um, cool. Let's see. What, what's the biggest misconception people would have about, uh, I mean, obviously not just about cannabis in general, but maybe about your service. Sure. Um, people tend to think that when they think a cannabis bar, they think it's going to be trashy, not classy. CD. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so they think it's going to be a bunch of folks with dreads and stinky <laughs> and totally like blazed and sat there, you know, just, yeah, man, you know, it's, they really, that whole Fast times at Ridgemont type. High comes yep, to my exactly. mind. <laughs> well, and that's why our staff shows up in clean, classy outfits. We're all like, you know, you must have clean hairstyles, groomed, yes, gentlemen yes. must be groomed, yeah. nothing too crazy. Um, but we just want you to be elevated professionals. Who We do not get high with you on the clock. As That's many times as you try to pass us the joint, we appreciate the camaraderie and all of that. <laughs> we are doing our job and our, our consumption can happen off the clock, you know, off and the clock. because yeah. people are just so excited that they actually can talk to you about it. Um, we joke and we say we have three layers of people at the cannabis bars. We have like the front layer is like the enthusiast, like, oh my God, this is here. We can do this. And they're so freaking excited. And they're typically consumers anyways. And yeah. you have the next layer who's literally looking over their shoulders and that's the kind of curious folks. They maybe yeah. once in a long time, maybe once never, but they're really curious, but they're intimidated they might be a first time consumer with you later. But then you have the third layer back who nose is in the air, ear is pointed right at you and they're listening to every word Single you say. Single thing you say. And yeah. those are the folks we call the skeptics. And those are the folks that eventually later in the night, if, you're, if they're coming back for more as they always do, they wanna hear more, coach, coach them over just to come over and be like, hey buddy, it's not get you, I'm not gonna get you high just by looking at it. Or talking to you. Yeah. Yep, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Come on over. I've seen you've been listening. What are your questions? You listen to everybody else. What are you what are you curious about? Try to just break the ice and you'd be amazed at how many of those skeptics we've even converted. Because it's kind of obvious that they want you to know that they're there because like I mean, we have yeah. one woman just walking <laughs> back and forth, shooting eye daggers the whole time. And we're like, Okay, honey, I'm gonna go get her. <laughs> like and she just didn't know that her great niece, who she was there for, was the bride, couldn't drink alcohol because it gave her migraines. And she didn't know that cannabis helped her anxiety. And on the biggest day of potential anxiety, she needed some yes. relief and deserved yes. some relief, but also deserved some fun. So at that point, I was able to flip great, great auntie into being more open minded. But then I started to ask her medical questions. I'm like, all right, do you have any friends who use this as medicine? Okay, cancer, MS, lupus, Parkinson's, you know, on and on. He's like, yes, yes. Rheumatoid arthritis, yeah. Yep. I'm like, thing. does it help? And she says, yes. And I said, how about you? Is there any reason you might be able to benefit from this if you tried or any pain? And she hit her hands. And I immediately was like, 
I have two guesses, but I'm gonna see if my first one's right. Is it rheumatoid arthritis? She pulls her hands out and bless her heart, her hands and knuckles are so gnarled, so swollen, so painful. And she's like, I'm in pain every day. I'm like, well, what if I told you I could give you something that's, you know, not gonna affect your head. All natural, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. People everywhere and it's natural and it has a couple other natural elements in it, but I can offer you pain relief and it will set in in three minutes. She's like, well, how long will it last? I'm like, that's the oh. yes, because a lot of like, people don't, in case they don't like the feeling, they don't yeah. maybe necessarily want and to And I was like, well, since you're going to try something topical only, I was like, you know, it could last up to two hours, realistically. But like, if you get pain relief for two hours, isn't that a win-win? She's like, yeah. And she's like, well, all right, all right. And she asked more questions about, are you sure it's legal? Are you sure? Yeah, it's yeah, 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 you know? yeah. And I'm like, yep, yep, yep. So I coached her through it. And then I told her, I shared my medical history is I have a really bad back injury, but I put topicals on almost daily. And especially on days that I'm working because I have a bulging disc in the middle of my back. I'm like, I use this every single day. Literally, I'm pulling it out of my personal stash, out of my purse to let you try it. And she tried it. She came back to me within 10 minutes and was in disbelief about how her hands felt came back later in the night and wanted to know where she could buy some and how she could get it for her friends. Well, and, and so. it's, it, it is much better than the chemicals that people take for pain totally. and, and it doesn't have side effects like medication exactly. can. So for, for that would be great. It That's was so yeah. interesting. So mm -hmm. do you I think mean, that she um, became a, a client for that type of product? I think so. I mean, like I wrote down all of the information, the website, so everything. She wanted and, the info. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. No, she did. I mean, but it's even like, I don't know. And this is like the empath in me as well Is like, I had a sweet little old lady pull up next to me in a gas station. And all of a sudden she peeks her head around the gas pump and she's like, I have a really weird question for you. And I'm like, okay. Like, you know, am I about to be Floyd or pranked or what's going on? And she was like, I have really bad rheumatoid arthritis and I can't open my gas cap. Would you just help me open my gas cap? And I'm like, bless your heart. You know, and these are the moments that made me that much of a avid believer when I worked at the dispensary is when I saw these two medical people who really needed it for more than just their mental coping. Yeah. Um, when they really needed it for medical reasons, it hit me near and dear. And this woman nearly made me cry that I just simply had a pop or gas cap for her. I turned around and I gave her my personal bottle again of my stuff and was like, please keep this. You need this more than I do. Like, you know, and like, I, I am trying to spread the knowledge about this plant with everybody. Um, you know, my mom is a physical therapist and an occupational therapist. And she literally, I send her these like, you know, non THC products and I send her these cross country and she's using them on patients in prohibition states, changing people's minds about CBD and everything even in her profession. So it's beautiful yeah. how it, it can be translated to so many people. And the older folks, if you're telling them you're going to give them pain relief, they're going to listen. They're going to be curious. Well, they're going to try. I mean, especially yeah. if they've tried all the, like I was saying, medicines that, that sometimes don't even work all that well and they're full, filled with chemicals and oh. um, have a bunch of side effects. So exactly. it is a nice, for sure, alternative. Yeah. Um, what so any reasons why somebody should hire a company like yours versus a friend to come and just like bring it for everybody besides the fact that it could get into some legal issues but i mean what what are some <laughs> what are some uh reasons why they should hire a company like this well number one if it's your friend you want them to be enjoying your celebration okay. with you not working for you so be a good friend don't make your friends work your way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Rule number one. Um, you know, rule number two is how experienced are they, you know, and how knowledgeable These emergencies. are they? Yes. Yep. Well about emergencies, but about cannabis in general, like just even being able to have educated conversations because people confide in us when they come up to the bar. Like we hear people's first times, like ever consuming stories. We hear about all their medical conditions. We have people pull us aside to talk to us about personal things like anorexia, about PTSD, about, you know, that they don't want to tell in front of all their cousins, you know, or anxiety, yeah. depression. And, but there, it's the first time that they feel comfortable talking to a pro. Give, give your guests the opportunity to speak with a pro, especially if they're kind of curious, especially if you're doing 
a destination wedding where so many people are coming in from out of state. Um, it's not to say that your friend can't grow the herb for you and donate it to your cannabis bar. Your friend can do that. But let them enjoy the celebration and hire a professional, but also hire a professional that's insured again, but um, you know, that does have that full level of training that you would expect out of a traditional bartender, just even to know when to simply cut somebody off and to have prevention techniques in place. Um, but also, yeah, understanding potential emergencies is huge because most people are not yeah, allergic to alcohol. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like the opportunity for people to have, there's more opportunities I feel like to, for somebody to have an adverse reaction to cannabis because there's a lot of other conditional or conditional ailments out there these days that alcohol doesn't seem to nearly have that big of a swing effect on, but cannabis can. So having the right guidance to enjoy the way you want to enjoy or to prevent something you want to prevent is huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, what is, my final question would be to, what is like the cost um, for a typical bar? Like just for the brides out there that are planning weddings, and I know it could be different in different states and that kind of thing, but what are you looking at? Maybe comparing it to like an open bar, like what are, what are the costs? Totally. So it's actually really simple and straightforward across the board for all of our locations. Um, it's based on per adult over the age of 21. So just like an alcohol bar would be is you're paying for the people over the age of 21. Um, and we have two different types of packages and then a combination package. So the first one is what we call the sip package. So that's only can of cocktails. So we bring the mixers, we bring the garnishes, we bring the ice, we bring the dispensers, the cupware, you bring the THC infusion product or the CBD infusion product. We bring everything else and we provide beverage service. So, so you, what do you mean by you, what, like, what do you mean by we bring it? Like the, the, the bride and groom would Irie. purchase it? Oh, Irie, so okay. I got Irie you. as part, yep. Got as part of that package, Irie will bring the drink mixers, the garnishes, the cups, the iceware, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, that package is $12.50 per adult over the age of 21. Got now it. you have the smoke package, which is gonna be bringing like glass smoking devices, the one hitters, the pre-rolled cones to make many joints, the little displays for the edibles, the, you know, dab rig for instance, um, that type of stuff, and all lighters, cleaning supplies, and all strain signage or selection signage so that people look, come up and they see it as a menu and they know what they're looking at. So we provide signage, apparatuses, cleaning, all that kind of stuff. And, and then so you have the combination. Yep. Um, so, but the smoke alone is $7.50 per adult. Then you have the smoke and sip, which is $18.50 per adult. And depending on the number of guests you have, will vary the number of bud tenders we send because you know, just like the number of bartenders with that bartender yeah. to bartender ratio. Got it. Well, that's good. And then, and then that's for the service and items. And then you also have to purchase the, the products. The product. And do you yep. purchase those through you as well? So no, we, we have, like, how does that work? Exactly. So we have different partner dispensaries that we can send the clients to, to get discount nuptial nugs. So they can go to the dispensary and pick up, um, typically most of our dispensary partners give our clients 15% discount off of all their products. And so what we do is once we know their final RSVP guest count, we give them kind of like a calculator and we figure out how much product they should purchase based on their package and how they want to provide the products. Got so, it. you know, get based on this amount, we would say this many ounces of dried flour than this amount of edibles and this amount of drinkables or whatever it may be. So, and then same with the CBD is we have a CBD partner that we just have them reach out to our CBD partner, place their order, product gets mailed to them, and then they bring all of the product to the event, they gift it to our team, and then we gift it back to their guests and micro servings. I so, got but it. But we also coach them because sometimes say that like they need to buy three ounces of flour we'll say, of cannabis and, and flower form. Well, most states have a cap where you can only buy one ounce of flour at a time. So in that state, I would tell them that they either need to go back three days in a row 
to go pick that up or they show up bridegroom best man exactly. or you know show up with your wedding party show up with your homies and have your people help you out if that needs to be the situation but understanding your purchase limits and understanding how much you should purchase because anything that's left over at the end of the night goes home with the clients or sometimes they pass it back to our staff as a nice tip little gratuity or sometimes they even give some to some of their other vendors as a little gratuity for their vendors if they're consumers um or sometimes it's going to the after party you know so yeah, yeah and, right um and so in terms of the pricing so let's say we have um a hundred guests for yep. a round number at a party at, at a wedding forgive me um but we know that like a quarter of them are not going to partake do you do the number of the partakers or do you do the whole number of the wedding guests? Under some circumstances, we're willing to discount it down a little bit um, because we do understand that, especially in these newer phases, not everybody is a consumer. But it doesn't mean that not all of those adult folks still might come over and talk to us, right. still right. take up our time, still might need that extra bud tender for the best type of service possible. So that makes um, sense. What, yeah, so pretty much like we have kind of like if less than 50% of their adults are consuming, are going to consume, then we'll discount it down, typically about 15 to 25%. Okay. And, but if we know that majority of their guests are going to consume, then yes, we are of charging course. for their full adult guest count. And you have an hour, or you have a, a per person charge, and that's for each hour, or is that for like, how does that work? It's for a four hour session. So pretty much okay. like you have one hour of setup included in your price point, four hours of active service, and then however long it takes for breakdown. So there's yeah. like a, there's a delivery setup and breakdown fee yeah. that okay. is associated with that. And the delivery fee varies depending on how far away the venue is from our yes. central base. But with that in mind, what we do is, yeah, that's a little bit of a sliding scale. Sure. but we do definitely make sure that we are coaching them. So like the average wedding, will just say that if there's a hundred folks, they're doing the smoke package, that would be $750, for instance, for our services. For now, the four hours. For four hours. And then if they wanted to add extra time, then they could add on extra time for our services for an additional 200 an hour. So. Yeah, and then, and then, um, what is your recommendation in when you should close the bud bar before the end of the wedding? Because you obviously don't want your guests to drive or exactly. in some circumstances, depending on what they intake, you might not want to drive, right? So how does totally. that? Totally. So it's just like the alcohol bar. Quite often we have the exact same hours of the alcohol bar. So like we start right at cocktail hour, for instance, uh -huh. and we close right at last call when alcohol is being closed up. Which is which like typically an hour or two before the end of the party. Actually, more like 30 to between 30 minutes and an hour before the close. Okay. Um, but often, depending on how close that closing time is compared to the event end, sometimes there will be shuttles offered. Sometimes we encourage our guests to do like Uber or Lyft codes for their guests. Yes. Different, um, bills, but always, we always make sure that we're encouraging exactly. safe, responsible driving um, and DDs. And that's why, and that's why also too, you have the micro services so yep, that exactly. it, I mean, the micro doses so that yep. you don't have that long time. Yeah. That longer duration. So yep. yeah, just making sure that we're keeping people safe. And you know, I mean, most people, they know, they know how to be safe and smart, especially with their tolerance. So we just want to make sure that they're enjoying themselves, but being responsible because we want everybody to be safe at the end of the night as well. Thank you so much for educating us today. I'm really thrilled and excited to get this up on YouTube and my podcast. Um, I will be putting all of your contact information down so that everyone will know how to contact you. And um, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. So thank much. you. I appreciate it so much. And it was a pleasure. So Yay. thank you for highlighting Irie. And uh, until the next time, I hope to work a wedding with you. Oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Thanks.